Not only is Mercury stationing retrograde this week on August the 23rd, but Uranus is also stationing retrograde on August the 28th. And since Uranus and Mercury are said to be both of the mind, I'll talk more about that in a, in a couple of minutes. This is likely to be um, a week uh, where the news is kind of off the charts. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, I am Louise Eddington. I am the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. And I'll tell you why I've got this picture up in a minute, but I don't you love the way it looks like a crown on me? <laughs> so anyway, I've been having fun playing with the backgrounds, but let's dive in. And I pulled a card for Uranus stationing retrograde. Uranus is stationing retrograde on the 28th, as I said, and I pulled a card for that from um, one of my new decks. I've been using it on my Venus retrograde heroine's journey class. And I pulled, oops, you cannot see it unless I hold it here. Queen, sorry, this is King Bee, but I'm calling it Queen Bee. <laughs> anyway, and so this is why I got this. <laughs> I'm Queen Bee today. So this is I Am Thinking. Okay, and this is from, uh, oh, can you see it? The Red Seeds Tarot by Linda Hill. And she's on Etsy in the UK. Yes, I really paid a lot of shipping to get it. So I want to read you a quote for this. The men of experiment are like the ant. They only collect and use, but the bee gathers its materials from the flowers of the garden and of the field, but transforms and digests it by a power of its own. And the bees are um, the swords in most decks, right? So the soul journey for this card, the king portrays an aspect of the masculine that holds a great strength, confidence and authority. This is an, an, a clever intellectual with a powerful and strategic mind. His, de his decision making and critical thinking emanates from a place of objectivity and wisdom. On the downside, he can be utterly pedantic and often acts as if he knows best, not to mention his mansplaining. At times, he can appear rather harsh and unkind, and he spares no time for fools. At times, he can hurt our feelings with his sarcasm. Be sure, though, this king is the one who we might be wise to turn to for wise advice, for here is good, solid counsel which reveals his open mind and his very loving heart. So this is basically Zeus or the king of the gods. Now, that's interesting, really, because, um, you know, myths are not planets and planets are not myths, but we are guided by them. And Zeus is actually Z Jupiter, who is also in the sign of Taurus, where Uranus is stationing retrograde. So let's have a look at the chart for Uranus stationing retrograde. And I'll, then I'll talk about it. Uranus is stationing retrograde on August the 28th, uh, Monday, August the 28th, a week from today when I'm recording this on the 21st at 10.38 p.m. Eastern. So it will be on the 29th for some of you. Now, Mercury has just stationed retrograde at 21 degrees Virgo and Uranus is stationing retrograde at 23 degrees of Taurus both earth signs and this earth signs generally have to do with material matters literally the earth as well and and you know very earthy subjects all right and so i think there's going to be a lot of shifting and changing here about values earthly matters um you know people are going to be literally grounded for a while and and so on so Uranus is stationing retrograde, as I said, at 23 degrees and four minutes of Taurus. And Uranus will be retrograde until January the 27th, 2024, at 19 degrees Taurus and five minutes. So he's literally going to move uh, retrograde back through four degrees of the Zodiac, which is what Uranus usually does. He has a very... Um, 
regular cycle. And incidentally, um, Uranus has an 84 year cycle and uh, this storm, the tropical storm Hillary that was um, hit that hit uh, California and the West Coast uh, and Mexico, mustn't forget Mexico, um, just yesterday, in fact, uh, as I record this on uh, Sunday, the 20th. Um, happened the last time they had a tropical storm hit the same area was um, in was 84 years ago when Taurus was here how unbelievable is that you cannot make this stuff up and I'll talk about the degrees in a minute I just want to talk about the aspects and then I'm going to stop sharing the chart and uh, talk about a little bit about it but I want to mention that Uranus is stationing retrograde in the sign of Taurus, which is one of Venus signs. And Venus, the Venus retrograde has been very intimately connected to the sign, uh, to this um, um, square to Uranus. So I'm going to look back at some dates and then we'll come back to the station. So Venus squared uh, Uranus for the first time on July the 2nd, 2023. And Venus was at 21 degrees and Uranus was at 21 degrees. Then they uh, squared off again at when Venus was at 22 degrees 54. And of course, so was Uranus. And then they are going to square off again on September the 29th when Uranus is retrograde. And that's going to be at 22 degrees and um, and 40 minutes. Now, also, Uranus um, was by two degrees in square to the new Venus star point. And Uranus is in Venus's home sign. So this is a really intimate dance between Venus and Uranus, even if they're not actually an aspect while uh, this when plan, when Uranus stations retrograde. OK, back to that. Uranus stations retrograde here, and this is in a trine aspect to Pallas Athena and Mercury, I'm going to say. It's also in a... a a little bit of a dance. This is a semi sextile to Eris and the North Node. Um, also a sextile here to Neptune. And in fact, this sextile is mm, pretty much forming a little bit of a yod to the South Node. And but the one of the more powerful exact aspects, other than the trine to Pallas Athena, which I'll talk about is a quincunx two series. All right, so there the as aspects. Right, I'm going to stop the share and talk for a bit. So Uranus is stationing retrograde at 23 degrees of um, Taurus. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you will know that I kind of get a little bit obsessed with the number 23. <laughs> it's been um, activated lots over the last while. Um, it's said to be the number of chaos, magic and discord. And by the discordians who worship Eris, they say it's Eris's number. And Eris was at 23 degrees a lot through the first couple of years of the pandemic and in several squares to Pluto and Capricorn, bringing major changes. But we've got a lot of other things have been hitting 23 degrees. And I keep writing about this in um I and in, in my daily Substack posts. And 23 is the number of pairs of chromosomes in the human body. Um, so we have uh, uh, it is our DNA. It's the number of seconds it takes for blood to go around the body. It's the number of days in the biorhythmic cycle. It's the number of digits we have. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes, two ears and a nose, which is 23. And 23 is, has even had um, movies <laughs> made about it. There is a number um, called uh, 23, okay, with, about a man who's obsessed with the number 23. 
The 23 Enigma is regarded as a corollary of the law of fives because two plus three equals five. Um, 23 is considered both lucky, unlucky, sinister, strange, sacred to Eris, as I mentioned, sacred to the unholy gods of the Sulu mythos. Um, there's so much about 23. Um, according to uh, sarahscoop.com, she says 23 is associated with the planet Uranus because it's because of the association with eccentricity and unpredictability. So it's got all that kind of energy. And, and so 23 is just, uh, just one of those numbers that has a lot to do with it. But of course, I'm most interested in the fact that it really has so much to do with the human body. Now I want to go to uh, my one of my favorite numerology sites, another one called ridingthebeast.com because uh, this brings some interesting kind of um, energies to, um, to numbers. So the Roman Catholic Church counts on the whole 23 dogmas. 12 are included in the symbol of the apostles. 11 have been defined by the church. Okay, so that's 23 showing up there. Uh, when the Kabbalists confirm that in the present times, a letter is missing in the Torah, this letter of the alphabet does not appear at all in our aeon and also is not used in the Torah. The primitive divine alphabet and all the Torah also would base on a series of 23 letters, not 22. Which one is become invisible for us and will reappear only during a next terrestrial period? And it is only because this letter misses now everywhere that we read in the Torah the positive and negative precepts. So anyway, you get the idea. So also, um, R. Alendi is said to say that uh, the principle of organization three, acting on the differentiation of the world in spirit and matter, 20, to allow precisely the incarnation of the spirit in the matter, two plus three equals five. And of course, five is a Venus number. It's the pentagram. It's Venus five-pointed star and Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, which is one of Venus signs. Now, I, I will tell you more in, in a minute about that. So um, at the moment of his assassination, Caesar was stabbed 23 times. I've told you about 23 seconds of um, circulation of the blood. Uh, the number of articulations in the human arm is actually 23 too. There are 23 axioms in the geometry of Euclid. Um, and so, and I mentioned there was 23 chromosomes actually in the egg and the spermatozoon. Okay, so that's enough about the number 23, other than to say that it is quite the number. Uh, you know, it's it's um let me have a look at the movie for you the number the 23 movie uh starred jim carrey of course <laughs> and he discovered an obscure book about the number 23 which led him into a descent into darkness as he became more and more obsessed with its contents he became more convinced that it was based on his life but um I have not seen the movie. I still have to um, find it, actually, and uh, watch it. Oh, and it's on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll add it to my two watch videos. Anyway, it got a very low rating, by the way, so I don't know. <laughs> it's probably, um, maybe I won't watch it all. But anyway, so 23, Uranus is stationing retrograde at that number. And I think it's a really important number. Now, let's look at the aspects, though. Twenty uh, Uranus is stationing in a trine aspect to Pallas Athena, who is the wise justice warrior. She's in Virgo, 
This is earth. This is perhaps earthly justice. She is the wise owl. She's the problem solver. She's creative intelligence. And she is conjunct Mercury, who went retrograde five days before Uranus. So they're all speaking to each other. OK, and and I think there's going to be a lot of news, a lot of ahas, a lot of awarenesses, a lot of perceptions, changes. Uh, Uranus, incidentally, as well. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is also happening um, three, six days before Venus stations direct. So we've got a lot of changes coming as well. Mercury, 23rd, Uranus, 28th. Venus stations direct on September the 3rd. But anyway, what was I saying? So we've got Mercury. Mercury is of the mind. He's a transition agent. He is a transference agent. He was the messenger of the gods between God and uh, humans. Okay. And he's in Virgo in the sign of meaning and service and crafts and, uh, and the priestess. And Uranus is said to be the Lord of Lightning Bolts. Uh, Richard Tarnas in Cosmos and Psyche said that Uranus should have been called Prometheus. He calls all the Uranus um, actions uh, like the Promethean moment. Uh, when Uranus moved into the sign of Aries, we had the big um, tsunami that killed so many people and caused uh, the problem at Fukushima. So Uranus is quite powerful and he is an agent of change. He is a change agent of rebelliousness and revolution, but innovation as well and that kind of revolution. So it's not always kind of the violent revolution. I find it interesting that this is all happening um, as Oppenheimer is in the movies. If you've watched the movie yet, um, one of the quotes at the beginning was about Prometheus bringing the fire of the gods down to earth. And so Mercury brings, you know, messages between gods and the earth. He is the messenger. Uranus brings or Prometheus brings the fire of the gods down. So this has quite a shocking quality. And here is Pallas Athena there as well in aspect to it and Pallas Athena as I said is wise justice um she was quite cruel at times but she was really fighting a warrior she was a warrior for justice bit of a virgin queen in the sign of Virgo so we've got a lot of mental activity here going on in earth signs a lot of perceptions are going to be changed a lot of shocks a lot of surprises and a lot of earth cracking shifting it, this is kind of very earthquakey kind of energy both literally and metaphorically now one other quote uh quote one other aspect that is really important for this uranus station is a quincunx two series c-e-r-e-s in the sign of libra series is at 22 degrees and 59 minutes one minute away from 23 degrees and Ceres and Uranus will exactly quincunx each other right after this uh, retrograde station. In fact, I can tell you when, and then I'll tell you what I think it means. So Ceres is a uh, quincunx to Uranus. Maybe they don't actually hit each other. They, oh. Help if I pick the right aspect. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. Very next day. Um, Uranus stations retrograde on August the 29th and on, uh, on August the 28th. And early the next morning, just hours afterwards, um, Ceres and Uranus are quincunx to each other. And at that point, Ceres is, has moved to 23 degrees and Uranus is still at a standstill. Now, a quincunx is an aspect of adjustment. It's, it's saying change is being forced, all right? And Ceres is the, um, is the faster moving of the energies. Uranus is at a standstill, but they are both in Venus's signs, okay? So something around values, our relationships and things is 
shifting crazily and madly. And Libra, the sign of justice. Taurus is the sign of stability, sustainability and values. Something is going to break, shift um, and change massively. And not only that, we have that quincunx and just days later, Ceres will actually conjunct the south node of um, of the moon. And that's happening on September the 4th, right as Venus stations direct. And I have been tracking that in my um, Venus retrograde class. But this is yet another moment of radical change. And I'm telling you, what's happening in the skies right now is reflected in the accelerated climate change and the accelerated need to do something about it. We need to call on um, our leaders globally to um, declare climate emergencies and to pour a huge amount of money into clean energy discoveries, into changing the way we live. It's time people need to get down to what's sustainable, to their um, uh, real core values and just stop this rampant um, capitalism, disaster capitalism that we're under. And this, I think, this Uranus station is going to be like Prometheus bringing the fire into Earth. Now, to go back to that quincunx between um, um, the two of them, okay, between Ceres and Uranus. So I've mentioned that um, quincunx, uh, that Uranus is kind of Prometheus and there's evidence, um, and this is kind of a little sneak peek into uh, something I'm researching for my book. There is evidence that um, ab about, uh, well, just at the start of the Neolithic era and the end of the Paleolithic era, uh, which is when uh, humans became agrarian and agricultural and went from being hunter-gatherers and started planting the co crops and needing to uh, find better and better ways of farming. There is evidence that there was a big die off of um, of many species at that time. Now I need to research that more, but something in the article said something about um, fires, and this reminded me of the Promethean impulse and about climate change because um, there's there's enough evidence in all my research so far that Ceres, uh, of course, Ceres was always there, but Ceres' discovery by us <laughs> on January the 1st, 1801, was in the middle of the Industrial Age. And I think since that time, she has been showing us, but we're not listening, the error of our ways with how we have industrialised farming, you know, how we've all kind of like got addicted to fire, if you like, light, light bulbs, Uranus, how we've got addicted to like having everything uh, lit up all the time. I walk early in the mornings and you know how many people have the outside of their house lit up all night and you think why we don't. But anyway, um, so, you know, I don't want to go on a big preachy ramble, but I have sworn to use my voice a little bit to talk about this. Um, there's also a book called Waking Up in the Dark by Clark Strand that talks about this to a degree. Um, it's not my favourite book, but some of it I really like. And, you know, we we really have become addicted to trying to turn everything into day. We're literally blotting out the stars. We're uncomfortable with the shadow. We're using more and more resources to keep everything lit up all the time which is Taurus and Venus. So it's to my mind that this Uranus station particularly is a big one because it's involved with those three squares to Venus. It's involved in this quincunx to uh, Ceres, which is nearly at the south node as well. And then this trine to 
Uranus, a Tauric to Mercury and Pallas Athena are saying we are going to be um, having to think about the way we live on Earth. OK, and how much meaning we have and what we're going to do about it. There's other aspects coming up that are um, kind of crazy as well about this this period. Um, you know, we've got the North Node and Eris moving closer together. The Goddess of Discord, another 23 energy, Chaos Magic, uh, Ceres moving towards the South Node. Then Mars is going to come up and join the South Node. And at the end of September, that's looking particularly gnarly and particularly angry. But this particular bit coming up at the end of August as Uranus stations retrograde, we could have a big climate event that um, really kind of shocks so much that people go, oh, my God, we really have to do something now. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember um, watching the tsunami that in Japan that um, affected Fukushima. I remember, you know, watching it. The, there was this these films of just this water just washing people out, wiping people out. Thousands died. And we don't listen. We still don't listen. I'm not sure we can ever stop earthquakes, actually. But, uh, you know, we get, we're going to have some big events. I read today, as I record this, that there are three uh, more tropical storms forming already after after Hillary. Um, the the during Hillary, the tropical storm Hillary in California, there was an earthquake as well that apparently was a real rock and roller. Uranus causes literal earthquakes because that's what caused the tsunami. I think we're in for a bit of a ride. But for you personally, I think um, it, this is for you to pay attention to what you can do, what you can change, how you can speak about it, um, how you can speak to your elected representatives about it, um, how you can work more towards um, helping um, and serving the human race. So there's my lecture. <laughs> So, you know, I don't really have a lot more to say about the Uranus station, except that Uranus will, as I think I already mentioned. So let's have a look at that again. Uranus will square Venus again on um, September the 29th. OK, so, yeah. So that's uh, when Uranus is retrograde and Venus is direct. And I'm going to actually look at that chart. Let's show it. So this brings me kind of back to the King B card. You know, we, we've got to look at how we are ruling over this domain that is our home. Anyway, by this point, Uranus and um, Venus, Uranus will be back at 22. Um, Venus will be at 22 degrees Leo after turning direct. She and that will be square where you're, she was um, the is close to the Venus star point. She'll be conjunct Juno, which is our sacred contracts with each other. By that point, look at this. The North Node and Eris will be um, almost exactly together and Mars that is the ruler of Aries, will be almost exactly on the south node. That's a really volatile time with these two square to each other. Incidentally, oh yeah. I think this, if I do a line from Uranus to Pholus, that is a Thor, another Thor's hammer. We keep getting Thor's hammers, smiting. Pholus in Capricorn is kind of lifting the lid off all the corruption in our institutions and all, all the things that need to be changed in our institutions. He's the domino effect, the Pandora's box kind of centaur. That's pretty big. Actually, the square from Venus to Uranus is um, on this moment, September the 29th, is going to be big as well. 
course, there's going to be other aspects. You know, Uranus is um, heading back towards Jupiter, but then Jupiter will station retrograde too. Um, there, Jupiter is going to retrograde um, September the 4th. <laughs> oh, gosh. September, so we've got Mercury on um, August the 23rd, Uranus on August the 28th. Venus stationing direct September the 3rd and Jupiter stationing retrograde on September the 4th. What a time. They don't always line up this closely together. That many planetary stations alone is bringing immense change. Okay, so hold on to your hats, people. This is going to be a time of uh, craziness, but really you can only focus on um, on staying in your lane, doing your work, doing the right work, which is Mercury and Pallas Athena in the sign of Virgo. Let me stop the share, actually. Oh, incidentally, Mercury will be back at the station retrograde degree um, on that last square. Wow. Yeah, we've got quite the time coming up, people. And I want to read you the symbol for Mer for Uranus stationing retrograde. So it actually says the Chandra symbol for this degree is a man with no mouth. This image seem this is from John Sandbatch.net. He channeled the Chandra symbols. This image seems, of course, at first glance as a handicap. But the, the man has obviously made it to adulthood. He's not a child without eating. So the image is about a very deep and primitive form of independence. It also implies that the individual is beyond words, um, is instead a person of action, one who deals with tangibles, which is the earth element, more than concepts. The Kabbalah tells us, of the very great importance of even very small things. And so this researcher into microbes is highly observant and like Sherlock Holmes can deduce much from scant information and can turn what seems very little into a great richness. Okay, so it's a time for action. It's not a time for just sitting on your hands I know Uranus and uh, and Mercury of the mind, but Mercury is in the sign of Virgo, which is one of his signs. And that's very much about crafts, making things, uh, being very useful, having meaning. OK, and Pallas Athena is there. So she's perhaps giving us the ideas and Uranus is kind of awakening us to it. Now, I want to read the Pleiadian symbol as well. And this is... Um, uh, the Pleiadian symbols are actually the Sabian symbols uh, rechanneled, and I'm not going to read the Sabian symbol because I really do not like it. I find some of the Sabian symbols too um, too archaic. Uh, but if you want to look it up, you can Google Sabian symbol Taurus 24 because this is Taurus 24. But the Pleiadian symbol is a shaman's bag full of many objects to be used for healing. So this really is really kind of telling me that we have the resources. We know what to do. We just have to figure it out and use it and take the action. This is not just about ideas. This is not just about talking the talk. This is about taking action. OK, that we is greatly, greatly needed. All right. So I don't want to make this one too long. So um, for now, I will ask you to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. And um, and really, you know, this period, as I said, Mercury, August the 23rd, stationing retrograde. Uranus, August the 28th, which is the crux of this video. Venus stationing direct September the 3rd. Jupiter stationing retrograde September the 4th. And then there's a whole lot at the end of September too. It's going to be a time of change, but it's also going to be a time of great innovation. And there is going to be good news too. All right, my loves, I will see you next time. Right. From the Queen Bee. <laughs>